Now, count on two, live and local in the Lowcountry. This is News 2 at 6. Suspicious packages being sent to young girls across the country. We speak with a Lowcountry mother who says her daughter was a victim years ago. And funding to complete a major Lowcountry interstate is back up for discussion. We will tell you why the governor has stepped in to intervene on the I-526 road project. Good evening, I'm Carolyn Murray. And I'm Brendan Clark. A deadly crash involving a motorcycle and SUV is under investigation in Mount Pleasant. And we now know the victim is a student at Wando High School. The accident happened this morning on Highway 17 and Carolina Park Boulevard. Mount Pleasant police say the motorcycle driver swerved to avoid traffic on that road. The biker then sideswiped a car and was then thrown off that motorcycle and died at the scene. News 2's Deanne Roberts is live at the scene where that crash happened. And Deanne, this is just about a half a block from Wando High School. Brendan, Carolyn, that's exactly right. The student may have been on his or her way to school this morning because the accident happened right here. This is the intersection of Highway 17 and Carolina Park Boulevard. And actually, Carolina Park Boulevard takes you right down to Wando High School. Take a look. This is video from the scene from earlier this morning. You can see a lane was blocked off and the motorcycle was damaged pretty badly from the accident. Police diverted traffic and urged drivers to take alternate routes because of the crash. We're told that students going to school this morning were not counted as tardy because of all of the backed up traffic from this morning. The school's principal did send out a voice message letting parents and students know that they lost one of their own this morning. She says the student was a senior. The identity of the victim has not been released just yet, but the school says they're working with the district to provide grief counseling to students at Wando High School. This is an ongoing investigation, but count on us to bring you the latest right here on News 2. Reporting live in Mount Pleasant tonight, Deanne Roberts, count on two. So sad news. Thank you, Deanne. A school bus accident in Carlton County sends 21 students and the driver to the hospital. The accident happened this morning on Highway 17A near Burr Hill Road. We were told an SUV hit the school bus as it was making a left turn on Burr Hill Road. Both people inside the SUV were taken to the medical center. The driver of the SUV charged with driving too fast for conditions. We had the chance to catch up with a fifth grader on the bus at the time of the accident. Take a listen. Riley walked away with a little bit of neck pain in her back as well. 25 people together were treated at Calton Medical Center. We are told there were no major injuries. Only on two suspicions raised about a possible predator sending packages to girls in several states. A low country mother says her daughter was a victim years ago. News News Dorchester County reporter Stetson Miller spoke with a mother who has a warning for other parents. A mother here in Dorchester County was very concerned when her daughter started receiving packages from a stranger. It happened back in 2014, but the packages are disturbingly similar to other mail that dozens of other young girls received more recently across the country. Last week, the FBI issued a Southeast Predator Alert after more than 50 unsolicited packages were sent to minor girls in South Carolina, Virginia, New Jersey, and Alabama. Dorchester County resident Kristen Lodick, who works as a mail carrier herself, reached out to News 2 after hearing about the packages and said her daughter received several of them as well years ago. We started getting tourist brochures and bridal brochures mailed to her school, which was pretty creepy. It also contained a note with an email address that was similar to what other girls have received. We were very scared, especially with the bridal magazines coming. Kristen says the packages came after she submitted a picture of her daughter for a Halloween slideshow on a local newspaper website. She said she never thought it could lead to something so disturbing. Now she's cautioning other parents about sharing their child's information online. Parents need to be warned that you shouldn't share, share anything about your child because something so simple like that, they can find out anything. And According to station WRBL in Columbus, Georgia, the FBI found the man sending the packages in Houston and learned he is living with his parents. 
He's mentally challenged and has sent packages to girls since 2007. Investigators say that no crime was committed and said that the man does not pose any real risk to young girls. They asked him to stop sending the packages. Kristen says that's what they told her too in her case as well. In Dorchester County, Cezanne Miller, count on two. Local and state leaders continue discussions about the completion of I-526 in Charleston County. The issue came up at the State Infrastructure Bank's meeting yesterday. Count on two consumer investigator Libba Holland joins us now to explain how the governor is also stepping in. Libba. Brendan, I spoke with Charleston County Council Chairman Vic Rawl today. He was at yesterday's meeting in Columbia, and he says about 20 months ago, the State Infrastructure Bank voted to unwind or, in his words, terminate the relationship with the county and I-526. But recently, several state legislators and board membership Limehouse met with the governor, Henry McMaster, asking him to now intervene. So Governor McMaster sent a letter to the chairman of the State Transportation Infrastructure Bank. It requests that the board take no further uh, action concerning the fate of I-526 until some of the issues are resolved. Like there are differing interpretations of the county's financial commitment and the requirements of the infrastructure bank and other discrepancies. Today, Chairman Rawl said that the county has worked to prove their end of the deal financially, and now they need a contract to bind all of the government authorities involved in the project. I look forward to trying to start the process by sending a proposed contractual change to the, the bank and ask them to consider it and hopefully they will look at it and add their changes or their concerns and we will go in that process until hopefully we can reach an accord. South Carolina Department of Transportation is also a part of this project. Now when I asked Raul, will the project ever get finished? His response was, quote, I wish I knew. Live in the Alert Center, Libba Holling, count on two. A memorial ride dedicated to the lives of fallen law enforcement officers took place today. News 2's Macy McLeod was there for the send off and is in our studio with more Macy. Well, here you can see the police escort as the cyclists left Mount Pleasant today. They are on the way to Chesapeake, Virginia, where they will ride 250 miles to Washington, D.C. with officers from across the country. Participating agencies include the Mount Pleasant Police Department, the Berkeley County Sheriff's Office, and South Carolina Law Enforcement Division. Each of the nine cyclists represents a fallen officer. I spoke to the mother of Robert Blazak, who says it means the world that the cyclists are making sure her son's memory lives on. They're out there, not only serving and protecting, but they're out there to do good. They should be respected, they should be valued, and they should be looked up to. The ride begins on Thursday. The local officers also fundraised for this trip. They collected $23,000 total. 17000 will be given to the families of the fallen officers. Macy McLeod, count on two. Well, tonight, newly elected Goose Creek Mayor Greg Habib will call to order his very first city council meeting after being sworn in as the city's new leader. If you remember last month, Habib defeated former Mayor Michael Heitzler. News 2's Berkeley County reporter Raymond Owen spoke with Habib about changes on the way. We're very excited about uh, moving forward. We have a very full agenda, probably a little more on it than I would, than I would have liked to have seen on my, my first meeting. The election signs are now down and now change is on the way. One big change for the first time since the 70s, a new mayor's name is on the nameplate. Most importantly, uh, we are uh, live streaming our meeting tonight. So for the first time uh, here at the city of Goose Creek and from now on, at least while I'm mayor, we'll be live streaming all of our city council meetings. The new mayor plans to focus on topics he ran on, like economic development and growth. But first, there are some details to take care of like how meetings are conducted. Obviously, we have to work through the first meeting. Uh, how, how, you know, I haven't done this for 40 years, so we have to work through the first meeting and, and have some, uh, get some procedures down the, that, that more fit me and how I want to operate and how I am more used to operating. And tonight's meeting begins at 7 o'clock tonight. And of course, you can watch it streaming live online. We'll have a, a copy of that link on our website, countonto.com.
In Goose Creek, I'm Raymond Owens. Count on two. It is that time of the year again. We are seeing more alligators out and about just about everywhere. And that's because it's officially mating season and alligators are starting to become more active. You may see them crossing a road, maybe out in the sun on the side of a pond. Officials say it's best to just leave them alone. No Look, problem with that. No problem. Stay away. <laughs> Look from a distance. Don't feed them because if you do, it's dangerous for both you and the alligator. Just like us, if we get a free meal offered to us, we're not going to go cook our own meal. So for an alligator, if they have food offered to them, they're not going to, you know, go find their own food. Um, so when those alligators become accustomed to people, um, we have to euthanize them. And mating season typically lasts until June, another month. Next on News 2. Construction for a new recycling facility in Charleston is still happening. But the money you pay now to recycle in Horry County is under scrutiny. That's coming up next in our Reality Check. 